It's not even fucking funny what these people are doing. Just the sit down and get rid of all that does. Look at the state of Mr. Tucker. Mapped. <laughs> Mapped. That's live. Mapped, it's not live, it's just a fucking. Yeah. Can you see? You got pistols in the snow, are you sure? Oh, nice, no, can you see? Yeah. <laughs> Don't open your mouth, I'm not sticking it in there, you fucking idiot. For fuck's sake, man. <laughs> this is what's down now. Well, that's frightened for our own fucking. for our own health. We've got to come outside and hide. Because the whole lot of them are just sitting in there doing fuck all, being paid. One, two, three, four. And there's another two in the office and they're doing absolutely. They're doing do you know, nothing. Do you know where they apply for their jobs? Huh? Do you know where they apply for their jobs? How are they? I was chatting to one of the bouncers yesterday. He applied for a job and a visa for his own country. In, uh, so they can come here on a fucking ban you? so they can come here on a banana boat and get a job to look after patients in the mental <laughs> basically <laughs> or in a yeah. mental hospital yeah that's where you got your job there's not one of them know what they're fucking doing they can't even make a they can't even make a cup of coffee man I asked for a cup of coffee and the fucking numbs go use the hot fucking tap <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even fucking Man, this is how fucking backward they are. Awesome, toasty, but that two warm bits of bread with no butter. <laughs> but after the putting again, it was no fucking warmer, I had the butter. <laughs> Found it on the light of cold fucking toast. Away. There's no worse when you've got a fucking cold fucking slice of toast and the butter's oh. still fucking cold on it. Oh, God. I have my boiled eggs every other day. They've been boiled. They turn up wet, uh, cold, and we get boiled in the microwave. <laughs> you bite into it and it splats everywhere and it fucking hurts your eyes you get it in the there. fucking explode you bite into it and it explodes and fucking nearly takes your fucking eyeballs clean out so no, on one meal a day now that's it no wonder that's you've got to go to the opticians for your fucking eyes tested because <laughs> you've got exploded egg in them <laughs> yeah basically huh? this is what we're up against man this is fucking how shit it is one two three four and they're sitting watching the telly getting paid, man. They're getting paid. They're being paid. They're going to have to get me a taxi to go all the way back to Northumberland. And it's going to cost about 1,500 fucking quid, man. Down back it will be. Eh? Down back. Down right. back, they're going to have to pay the man yeah. fucking all the way back and all. Yeah. And I'm not even supposed to fucking be here, man. I'm not even supposed to be here. This is how fucking backward this Tory government is. They're fucking ruined, man. They're ruined. It's not even fucking funny. Right. It's not even funny. We've all been dragged off the fucking streets. Tell us what you were locked up for, Christopher. Please, tell the camera. Locked up because some bloke swung at me twice. Spat at you twice? Swung at me. Swung at you? Yeah, twice. And I swung back and he ducked that away. And he sang on his toe and floor, so I stamped on his way bands. I threw a pint of beer across the road and hit a car. That's what I was listening to. <laughs> Smashing the man's fucking glasses? Yes, down on his sunglasses after he tried to attack me. And they launched in here? And I went to the police station in Torquay and spent three nights in Torquay, 72 and a half hours. Within the first 24 hours, I was not uh, even told that the mental health team were turning up. Three guys turned up, interviewed themselves as the mental health team. I spoke for a, ma a maximum of five minutes. And they detained me under the Mental Health Act. However, I was, they had a home visit the day before. There was a mum who was worried about me because I was going to be homeless again. I made up lies. The um, home team came out, two guys, for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And I went through some of the stuff that I've been going through. And however far fetched it seemed, I backed it up with photographs and pictures. And they believed me. They, didn't, they believed that. Um, what I was telling them was, was true, I had empathy. They also said that you could see why your mum could see that it wasn't true and she was worried. I could. But my mum wouldn't ever look at the pictures of this moon coming out of the sea and said I was a son. She hadn't seen the other things I was talking about. But they had heard about TVs beyond TVs, watching you, surveillance. Um, and they agreed that I was safe to live in the community. And we're going to come out and see me the next day. 
which they didn't do. Um, the next day they turned up at half past eight in the morning when I was on my breakfast and an ounce, so I told them to go forth and multiply and come back later in the afternoon. I got agitated because I, I knew what was coming next, so I was going to pack up my stuff and I was going to Zanti on Saturday. I got the bus in the Dartmouth after having a few beers, bumped into a homeless mate of mine. And this twat who'd been going past me at above town where I was working for the last three months, giving me evils and looking at me, started on me and swung for me twice. I swung for him once. His glasses were thrown on the end of the floor. I stamped on them, threw my pint glass just onto the floor like that and it smashed. They locked themselves in the chip shop, shut all the chip shop down. <laughs> my mate and I carried on drinking there for half an hour. Boom went around the corner. And within 10 minutes of us sat down around the corner in the shelter, two police cars turned up, I was cuffed, put to the floor, face down, by two officers. One had his foot on my head or back, and the other one had his foot on my uh, elbow. I was like that for about 40, 45 minutes until the paddy wagon turned up. The bloke driving the paddy wagon was this bloke called Murray, who had been working with me for the last six weeks my and he was from the Isle of Skye and my boss met him hiking in the um, Scottish Head Islands and next minute he's coming down here and working for about £900 a week all his tools were really old and he's lived in a camper van at my boss's house and he needs to drive a camper van up to Scotland every other weekend and back again must have cost him five six hundred pounds in fuel each time so he was <laughs> what was he doing? He wasn't making any money. <laughs> Why not? Well, I reckon he was a copper. And then, as I say, within the first 24 hours of him being arrested in the cell, three guys, unannounced, came to the doorway, asked me a couple of questions. I reluctantly answered them. Two hours later, I was told by the police, there's no charges being pressed against you. And you're being held now by the mental health team. I spent another two nights in there for three days until I was told or taken to uh, one of the hospitals in Exeter called the... Oh, I can't remember now. And I ended up here because I absconded. And I've been in, now, I've been in including the custody, the other mental home in Torquay, uh, Exeter, and here for 40, this is my 42nd night. And in that time, I lost the tribunal, and I only just found out today, but I lost it. Uh, and then I was put on section three about, about a week ago. I agreed with the doctor that I would no, wouldn't take any medicine. And she said, that's okay, as long as you don't get violent or start smashing things up, you could stay on no tablets. Lo and behold, I wasn't violent, didn't smash anything up. Second wall round, I was given a mixture of tablets, which I reluctantly took. Then, a week later, I was told that I was getting no better, I was getting worse. How she knows what my mental state is like, I don't know, because she didn't know which madam. They decided to put my, ta double my tablets. That night, I slept out here. I urinated myself, which is the first time I've done that sober as an adult. I've done it a few times without a pair of pissed. I was that relaxed and ju drugged up. I woke up at say six in the morning, five in the morning. I could not speak. My speech was more blurred like, spurred like this. I could not open my eyes and lost my balance. I was falling asleep all over the place. The next morning I woke up my, speed, my balance had come back, my slurriness was still there, and my eyesight was, my long eyes, long sightedness. So I could see further away, fine, but anything up like this, text messages, I couldn't read. So I called the, the next day, I called the ambulance service because I believed I had a mini stroke. Bosie, the receptionist, come hairing out of the office, who are you talking to? You can't do this, you can't do that. By this time, I'd already arranged with the lady at the ambulance that it wasn't serious. 
However, would you be able to come out and see me? But he said, yes, Mr. Tucker, we'll get someone out to you today. And uh, within that, uh, that e early evening, a doctor turned up, no ID. Um, she looked like a famous person, so my mate said. Um, and she went through, though my face feels soft on one side, did you eyes drop down and have numbness up and down your legs? I said no. I believe they turned the ambulance service around, but they didn't want them to come in here. The ambulance person on the phone wanted to speak to Rosie, the, uh, the nurse in charge. So she passed the phone over and they spoke to each other. Then I couldn't have my phone back for at least two hours. Um, the next day, my vision was still bad. The slowness had picked up, it, it, it dropped away quite a bit. Um, and then the next day, I booked myself a test at Specsavers. I attended the test and they agreed that my, I had problems with my sight uh, due to the, well, they didn't say that, but due to the drugs which were administered to me. I was long sighted. I had an x ray of my eyes. One eye, I've got a birthmark in, which is unusual. That's going to be checked within the next three months. <coughs> And then I was told to go downstairs and choose my a pair of glasses, reading glasses, which I need. Never had any problems with my sight whatsoever before. And I believe it's all been caused by this... Um, medication. Medication. And the next war run I had, after telling them about my colitis and how bad it was, she decided to put me on injections. So I've been on injections. Tonight, I think that someone has put something in my vape oil, which is locked away in the... Well, it's not even locked away. It's in the cupboard in the, in the filing cabinet in the office. And I think someone's put something in it to protect the plastic. I changed the coil in my vape. And we filled it with the same juice, the very, very berry one. Um, and it still carried on, tasting like plastic. I washed the whole thing out and put a fresh lot of uh, vapor oil in it and it's working as good as gold. Someone had been on my phone in there because a couple of things happened on my phone. Um, someone's name's been changed on my phone to a phone number. My phone has been telling me it's been uh, multiple times tried to be logged into on Facebook in different parts of the world and Europe, America and in the UK. Um, I promised one thing, I may never deliver it. I've asked to change my diet because of my colitis is getting bad again. They could, I asked the, for the crackers and ham. They produced chocolate crackers to have with my ham. Eggs were intermittent. So as we speak now, I'm on a juice for breakfast. Well, I think juice is a fortunate thing. When you go into the hospital, I have meal by mouth. They give you a milkshake, so I have that for breakfast that for lunch and managed to keep some tea down in the evening, have a meal in the evening. And that's Mr Tucker's fucking story. Well, there's more to it than that, but I can't remember that. <laughs> but I'll feed you the CQC, that's right. I'll feed you the CQC, I'm going to be telling them everything which has happened. They told me today that would I give consent for their mental health team to come down here and assess me. I said yes. Today, I was visited by a lady who um, checks out mental hospitals all the way through up the southwest and said that on a, a, a ID card. She was a man. She's a manager of the mental health services in the southwest. So I'm now waiting to find out what the um, CQC's mental health team uh, think about me. Um, on top of all this, I've had to give up my bungalow on the 30th of this month, it was the 26th of 30th. Not one of them has helped me to, to uh, come to terms with how I'm going to do it. Should I keep the bungalow going or should I jack it in? Uh, I've lost about £6,000 in, in wages. Yes, I wasn't working, I give up work for a couple of weeks because something happened in that job, but I've been offered multiple other billion jobs. So I've lost not only um, 
income of £6,000. I've lost my bungalow on the deposit for that, so I'm not going to be able to clean and tidy it up. And I'm going to be homeless again. And all your property? Yeah, I've lost stuff up the north. It will be, yeah, unless my mum helps me out and moves it all for me, but I can't say she can with her and my sister because the settees and stuff like that and the washing machines we do have it for them. So we've created a lot more problems. I had my girls wanting to come and visit me. I was taken from Exeter where I was in solitary confinement after I'd gone for a night. I had a shower and they didn't pass a towel into me for an hour and 20 minutes. Two girls were there laughing at me. I got food after about eight hours of being in solitary and the bread was all hard and it was inedible. Then they started saying you're going to uh, Andover, no Andover, Stevenage. <laughs> Stevenage. Um, it, before that, I had a tribunal. The judge said to me something very really strange it was via Skype. Christian, it may take me some time to find come to a decision about whether to keep, whether you've won your trial or not. However, I will inform you via email and the national and the mental health team by email. My solicitor phoned me within an hour of that happening and told me that I'd lost the case. Until today I hadn't received an email. But lo and behold today I have received an email of some nearly three weeks later to say I lost the appeal. I asked for another appeal here with this doctor. She said, you can't legally have a, another appeal because you lost one. And I said to her, I'm on section three, I appeal with section two. She said, it doesn't matter. You've lost your appeal and you can't have another one. And if you could have another one, you'd lose it anyway. So I am appealing. Um, my solicitor sent three appeal letters in None of them reached me, the fourth time it did, and I've put, set the wheels in motion for a uh, tribunal. I've asked to be transferred nearer my home. They said no, that's not going to be happening either. Um, however, the last time I went in, they, they've changed their mind, they said they're checking every day for beds. There's beds coming up across the road here. I've been put into one of those. This ward is... Half full? Half full. Yep, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight on each side. So there's eight yeah. rooms empty on this wall. Eight or tw eight or six, something like that. Yeah, in the region of six to eight. I thought there was twelve rooms, but not but there's at least six rooms spare here. Um it's just one lie after another. I've been ask I've been after a bar of soap since last Thursday. I haven't been given that. I've been given um, shampoo to use, which is more costly than a bar of Dove soap, which will last me the same amount of time. They don't have soap. I didn't know I had a care coordinator until today. I phoned her up to explain my situation. I couldn't get through to her. Um, it rang out. I left a message. She phoned me back. I missed it because my phone was being charged in there. So I phoned her back, spoke to a colleague. She said she's um, she'll phone you back later today because she's not due back into work till next Thursday. I wanted to speak to her about how my housing advice. Should I carry on living in the bungalow or keeping the bungalow going and wait for the landlord to have legally evict me, or should I um, take my mum on her offer to move my stuff out for me and lose my deposit? She didn't phone me back and she can't phone me back till after this has happened. Uh, I've been moved from a from a hospital where I where I could do my gardening, a bit of weeding out in the belt. Mm -hmm. It was smoking. My three things were gardening, smoking, and having a bath twice a day. To a hospital which you can't smoke, you can't do any gardening, and hasn't got any baths. And we're in a fucking cage. Every time I have a ward bound. And they're fucking having a laugh about it. Yeah, but not only that. It's, look, they, Oh, the biggest thing, remember the smoking? Mm -hmm. This 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 ward changed to a smoking, a non-smoking hospital, okay? A week or two before the four-day bank holiday. Now, there's 12, 12 rooms here, I think, and they were given 12 vape pens on a Wednesday night to last us Thursday, 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday because it was a long bank holiday weekend. So the bait pens didn't turn up to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, eight days. What they have to do by law is they go for a three-pronged approach when you go to uh, tobacco and prisons or anything like this. You have a nicotine patch, which constantly gives you nicotine throughout the day. You have a lozenger, which spikes your, uh, uh, your cravings for nicotine, and you're given an inhalator. Well, we didn't have any inhalators, and that inhalator is, a, is, a rec- is a when you put your hand to your, your mouth, mouth the rep- repetitive movement which yep. um which you need as a smoker i believe well i didn't have any until the wednesday before which was wet, a week after the it was a day before we got the vape pens so we had to wait seven days for that we couldn't get any vapes here whatsoever because you could send money into this bank the client account but you can't access it till the working hours when we had all these bank holidays. Um, there was high stress on the board. I went to the doctor and said, look, I need to have some some, pe- uh, some of these vape pens. He agreed. Um, he got some and dished them out to nearly all the patients apart from me. Um, and I felt that I was being goaded a couple of times with people laughing and smiling at me, smoking these things. I didn't have one. Every time I go for a ball bound, as something goes on, my nicotine patches were crossed off during that time as well. Uh, every time I go for a ball bound, I've been wound up. Uh, and I go into this meeting, there's seven, there's seven people there, six or seven, two doctors and other people. You answer one question, and then someone else is asking you something else, someone else is asking you something else. It just feels like you're being just dominated and humiliated. Humiliated, dominated, and just treat like a fucking piece of scum. Basically. Yeah. On, a, on a merry-go-round that you can't fucking get off. Yeah, you can't Basically. Get yeah. You can't do fuck all, and it's fucking sick. It is. And my two girls, that's right, they were going to come up and see me for Father's Day. My mum, who I didn't who I didn't give consent to possibly speaking to, because she made up so many lies about me when I was detained two and a half years ago and I got a discharge. I was on the streets, that's another story, after that before five or six, four months. And then um, she filmed the hospital to find out where to park. The lady in reception called Claire said, who are you bringing up with you? So my mum said, myself, my mum, my sister, my two young girls. Claire said, hold on a minute. And she came back to the phone and said, no, Christian is not allowed to see his daughters. We don't want his daughters coming up here. I was men- That was mentioned in the board round. Dr. Mahani said it definitely didn't come from her. Bullshit. Um, and the only way you could find out is if your mum knew who she spoke to. And my mum's pretty switched on like that. She spoke to a lady called Claire. And lo and behold, Claire was a lady who works in reception. <laughs> so I've there asked. Go. I've asked who Claire went to to get the advice. It can't be Mrs. Marnie or the other doctors because they were all in the meeting saying it, it wasn't them. It was, they've had my files mixed up with another. When I came up here, there was four Chrises or Christians or Christophers, and lots of Johns in names. My file had been mixed up with Christopher Jones's Chris Jones's file. Um, Just one thing after the other. Again. Corruption at the fucking highest level, man. Yeah. So I was doing what they said. I was not breaking any rules by being violent or aggressive or or stuff like that. And she went back on the road, put them on tablets. Then she doubled them the next time and had this mini stroke. Then after that, she said, you've got to have the injections now. So she's been lying to me every t- single time along the way. I've, it took me three weeks, nearly three weeks to get leave here. Leave is a 30 minute break um, where you're not allowed to have any cigarettes. However, everyone out by the front there on the main building are smoking cigarettes. That is against your human rights. I agree that you can't smoke in the grounds here and, and in this property. But out there, 
when you're on the main road, mm -hmm. you can do what you like. Exactly. But we can't do what we like out there because we're not allowed to have our own tobacco. It's a breach of human rights. <coughs> so I, I've documented, I've got a lot more complaints than that. But this is just the things I can just read off the top of my head now. This bloke's staring at me now, so I don't know what he's looking at. What are you looking at, mate? He's put his head in his hands. I've put together, I've been on the phone to the CQC nearly every other day. Um, and after we've had about this stroke episode, and my eyesight's going and need glasses, they've asked me, would I mind being checked out by their mental health team? And apparently that's quite some feat. It's the Quality Care, care Control, um, or Commission, whatever it is, just to send their own um, mental health team out to assess me is quite something, my sister said, and so do the advocate. Um, so I'm interested to find out if they think I'm mentally unwell and deserve to be put on a section, because I've been put on a section three now, which means I could be here for up to six months and kept over and over and over again, which has happened to famous people in the past, or not, and not so famous people. So I'm hoping when I speak to the CQC's mental health team that they deem me of sound mind and realise that my um, living and uh, my uh, circumstances out of my control in my personal life have led me to here, but it's not just my mind, which is being worn out. I've been physically worn out by stuff which has been going happening around me um, in my local areas. And I think if, if, if um, they deem me to be of sound mind, I'll be suing these lot for every penny I can get out of them. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to be fucking doing. And that is Mr. Tucker's fucking story. And that's just one of them. I'm knackered here. And he's fucking just worn out and racked. Drugged up to my eyeballs. Drugged up the eyeballs. Slow fucking can't slow. Can't keep my eyes open. Can't keep my eyes open. And we're sitting outside because the lot of them, <laughs> every fucking one of them, watching the TV. We're not even allowed to watch the fucking TV in here. And it's after fucking... Yeah, it's after 12. If you're watching the TV, it goes off at 12. They come and switch your fucking telly it's off. It's 0, 0, hours. And they're all watching it. And they come and switch... One, two, three, four, five, six of them just sat around doing nothing. Half the time I didn't even sweep up and clean up half themselves. Countless phone calls from my mum. Oh, my phone's been tapped as well. Aye. Yep, mine's... After 10 minutes, I'm speaking to my mother and she goes all slurry and the line's breaking up. That's happened to the CQC twice. Um, if my mum's phone up and left the message, I've never got it. CQC online, I've never got it. Usually one error after another. You're belittled by people half my age. They don't know how to cook toast. They don't know, some of them don't know how to cook, <laughs> make a cup of coffee. It's just, they just believe. And this is costing the taxpayer about five grand a week minimum per room. Per room, eh? And it's paid, been paid for by the tax office. There was no talking therapy here. There's no alternative therapies. You're just left to be injected with these drugs oh, and taking the drugs manually. Medication time. Yeah, Medication and, and time. And that includes is just you going to bed and sleeping. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk about why you got here and how you're going to get well. They just drug you up because they're making money on the drugs, put you to sleep, and hopefully, magically, when you wake up and get out of it, all your problems are going to be solved. But being in here has created more problems for you more problems by coming in here than it would have done if I was out on the streets mm -hmm. and I was deemed to be of sound mind and not a threat to my society or myself by the mental health team which came out and saw me two days before I was detained I think there's something else going on here which I'm not being told about and I think that's it's very similar to most people everyone who's come into this hospital it's been come through the police station. Not one of these people have been, who I've seen, have been diagnosed to have a mental illness by a doctor. They've all come through the police station and they've been... Um, twisted up. Twisted up, and but we put in a cell, not been charged with anything. The mental health team have had a quick row with them and deemed them mentally unwell and sectioned them on section two. 
and brought in. All of them have come in via being invested. Some more, some more serious than others. Um, I'm just standing on someone's sunglasses for them trying to attack me. Really, I don't even think it's. Well, I see the next to them. I was wondering now and there in the night times. I said, everyone in the, everyone in the town centre will be arrested. It's a joke. It's a setup. And that is Mr. Tucker's story. And that's just one of them. And I'm telling you now, I'm going to make a story about every fucking patient in here. Because we've all got the same fucking shit going on. And there's not one of them even being assessed by a doctor. I wasn't even checked into this fucking hospital, man. I wasn't even checked in. I didn't even I didn't even have a fucking towel given to us after fucking six days, man. Six fucking days. Six whole fucking days without even checking us in. And it wasn't until two weeks the come home says, you're locked up under a section two. And I went, wow, finally. Somebody's fucking finally come up to us and told us what I'm locked up for. I was locked up in a departure lounge at the fucking airport, man. And they said I was walking around in front of fucking aircraft and that. Stole my money. Stole my fucking house keys. And when my solicitors rung them, I've had the police ring, ring me the day, oh, what, 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 you put a complaint in for? And I went, because you fucking twisted us up, you nearly broke my shoulder, locked us up in the back of a van, didn't tell us where I was going, fucking carted us off in the back of a little cage, all the way to fucking Bristol. From Newcastle. From Newcastle. <laughs> in the Newcastle. Fucking Bristol. Newcastle, the other side of the country. And they didn't even fucking tell us what I was, I wasn't even under the mental health fucking act. I had the early intervention team come to see us once a week and it was a psychologist and he said you're doing fine on your acupuncture I don't believe in tablets, I don't believe in fucking injections it's all fucking nonsense man it's a placebo, a placebo of pure shit but what no formula police have done to me and done to him they're gonna fucking pay for it and this is why we're here because I'm telling you now they're going to have to get me a taxi home. And the taxi's going to be about a £1,000 each fucking way. That's £2,000 of taxpayers' money. And it's fucking... It's £5,000 per person a fucking week in this one ward. We can't do fuck all. We're locked in a cage, right? Everything could be done here at home. Everything could be done from home, from Good. here. Good. And Everything. the fucking Tory party are just fucking laughing about it. And there's not one person out there willing to stand up and fight about it. But I'm telling you now, I don't give a fuck. I've got nothing else to lose me. I was supposed to be at the hospital. If I check some of my melanoma on that mole on the side of my face, suspected melanoma that killed my fucking sister this time last year. And she didn't even reach fucking 40 year old, man. I'm 39 next fucking week, and they're still going to lock us up on my birthday. And they says, oh, well, we'll get you home on the first. I'm supposed to be sorting my mum's fucking will out. My mum's left us. Right, she left it to me, no one else. She left it to Lee, my name, Lee Ratcliffe, to sort a fucking will out. Not my dad, not any of my families. And how the fuck can I do that when I'm locked up in a fucking mental hospital for fuck all that I've done? I haven't done anything. And it's all because of these fucking Tories trying to get their hands on money, right, that doesn't belong to them. Through the cool board. All my fucking family's money is in the, in the cool board. It's all through the cool board. And they've dismantled my granddad's fucking machines that he's looked after for 40 years. And they've sold them to fucking companies in America and Canada and things like that. But I'm telling you now, they can get their fucking things brought back because when I come back and I go through everything, what a fucking compensation claim I'm in for. What a compensation claim everyone's in for. I've seen how much money these cunts have been stealing, man. I've been and I've seen on the boards of the stock market, I've seen the whole lot. I've seen everything. And they don't even know how to fucking do trades. They're putting trades up in the air like that. It's not how the Labour Party work. It's not how banks mining work. Not how the farmers work. La Labour parties, farmers, miners. They tunnel under the fucking ground, man. They work the land. They work the land. Goes off meterage. The more meterage you do, the more you're rewarded when you come to the end of your fucking working career. Except these Tories are fucking stealing every last fucking penny off everyone. So everyone's immobilised. And if people don't stand up for their human rights, you're going to have fuck all left and take it from me. World War Three is coming. 
And if you can't feed yourself, you can't fucking light fucking fires for yourself, you can't survive, you can't do fuck all, what the fuck are you going to fight for? You're going to fight for nothing, because there's nothing left for you to fight for, man. There's nothing left for you to fight for. That's the fucking sad thing. And you're all sitting there letting it happen. And the people who can do anything about it are locked in a fucking, in the SPAC Olympics in a fucking mental hospital. Because the Tories are that fucking petrified of what they're going to lose. But I'm telling you now, Boris Johnson is going to have to come to Northumberland and beg for his fucking seats back. These people can hear us out here. I know they can. They've, and, they've gone from uh, laughing to staring right, at the TV. And they're sitting, on. they're sitting. And they're going to the office. Very quietly. And they're very, but very there's, worried. There's no TV. And they're no. saying, oh, well, what they're talking about, what they're talking about. But I'm, fuck. I don't give a fuck, me. I don't give a, they're going to lock me up in here for a fucking year. But I'm telling you now, this is the fucking start of something very, very real for people. You people out there aren't watching the same shit what we're watching, mind. You're not watching the same shit we're watching. And they're walking around worried already because this is the Big Brother house, man. It's the Big Brother house. <clears throat> but what these fucking idiots in here don't realise is that everything I've done, I've been fucking watched for a long, long time. The cameras. And what I've been watching on the fucking TV, right, what I've been watching... Isn't what you fucking people are watching. Not at all, mind. And what I've watched, and what I've seen these Tories fucking do, is the destruction of this whole fucking country. And I'm telling you now, I was elected the vice captain of Middleton at Chantry by Colin Slater when I was in Chantry Middle School. I never knew what that fucking meant. I never knew what it meant until my mum died. But I'm telling you now, I'm a fucking pack leader, me. And when my mum died, she left it to me. To sort things out. And when I've been told to step in, right, I've stepped into something that I can't do anything about without other people. I can't do a thing about it. But my grander, William Mullen, left me two fucking cards. Two fucking cards. That's all he left is two cards. And one was Big Jory, and the other was the Ace of Spades. And take it from me, when I've gone into banks, right, and I've looked, and I've went, right, here's my number. I'm William Mullen's grandson, and Ratcliffe's grandson, son of Jeanette Ratcliffe, right. I believe that lady is watching us on the mobile phone. She is, I. She's sitting watching, listening. <coughs> right. Everyone's starting to move around now, that we're getting sketchy, because we're going on and, on and on and on. She just looked and smiled, and she's going with the phone again. But what, what, these, what these people don't understand is, right, they don't understand what, what they're dealing with. They don't understand what they're dealing with. But I'm telling you now, I've been left two cards by my grandma, right? My uncle Brian's a very intelligent man. He sorts companies out from fucking, from Carlisle, all over the place, who are in trouble, right? When I went bank, back to banks mining, right? Yeah, you're still talking, man, yeah. I was still, still talking, talking, fuck off, mate, mind your own business. Yeah. When I have went back to banks mining, right, and I've looked at what the fuck they've done, right? They were supposed to win a mining contract at Ellington. Right, they were supposed to win it, but the Tories just went, oh, well, it belongs to the Crown. Alcan Farms belong to the Crown, belongs to the Crown. Fucking doesn't belong to the Crown at all. I've went back all fucking through hundreds and hundreds of years of records, right? I'm a reaver. We're all reavers from Northumberland, the whole lot of us. Right? Reavers take what they want, when they want, right? But they don't take the fucking piss. They don't take the piss. They don't step on each other's toes because they, they respect each other. They all respect each other. And that's that's how how the world works. Everything's free. But you don't take the piss. You look after your planet. And you, you don't rob from it. You don't rob from other people. Everything's fucking free, man. But what these Tories are doing, they're immobilising the whole entire country. You right? Know, he this again. He basically said to himself, I can't believe he's still talking. Aye. Got loads of it, yeah. Aye. They're fucking, they're walking they're around now. Right? Really. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just in this one fucking place, man. I was locked up, man. Yes, they're still talking. I was locked up in fucking... I was locked up in Newcastle Airport in a departure lounge. One, they turned two, round. Three, four, five, they six, turned round seven, and they fucking told me... Not doing anything. Right? On the phone. They Tools told me, right, that I was walking round in front of the fucking aircraft and things like that. I went to get a fucking flight, man. I was sitting there... Loads of people sitting around us. 
And the fucking, they come in and went, what's your name? What's your name? I went, and why the fuck would I tell you that? Mm, I went, all I want to do is go and hold her. That's all I want to do is go and hold her. I don't want any fucking hassle. I've been through enough shit in my life. Through you fucking people. These fucking people killed my nephew, man. And there was an inquest into it. And they brushed it under the fucking carpet. But I'm telling you now, I know for a fact what those police did to my nephew. And they're not getting away with it, man. Because they've tried to do the same fucking thing to me. And all my friends are going, oh, he's lost the plot, he's lost the plot. I haven't lost the fucking plot at all, man. I haven't lost the plot at all. There's fuck all wrong with me. But I'm telling you now, when I get back to my life, watch me fucking go. Just watch me go. I've got a better mind than any cunt who's ever went before us, man. That anyone has ever went before us. Right, I don't give a monkey's fucking chuff about these fucking idiots. But I'm telling you now, my mum is going in the ground on the 1st. It's my birthday on the 27th. And if I don't get the fuck out of here, right, I'll fucking kick off massively. And I'm telling you who I'm coming for. I'm coming for that cunt number 10. Because it's all down to that fucking Wurzel Gummidge cunt. While I'm locked up in Yemen. Him and the police, because they know they've lost something. But no one goes and steals my family's cancer research. No one goes and does it. And they don't even know who they've stolen it off. Because it all goes to fucking charity, man. All these cancer charities. And they fucking stole it. And they think it's fucking funny about it, man. They think it's funny laughing about it and things like that. But they don't understand. I'll have a cup of tea, mate. Uh, coffee, mate. Cheers. But they don't, they don't understand. What was it, sorry, mate? Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee, mate. Coffee, yeah. Biscuits? Um, I guess a couple of biscuits. But I'm going to switch this fucking video off because they're watching us and I'm going to take my phone off us tomorrow. So, this is mine and Chris's story for tonight. So, good night, people. Good night. God bless.